Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is old granddaddy coming again. I want to talk a little bit today about uh, some current issues, and uh, because I think it's good for any time, but some things that I've often thought about as I've gotten older and begin to see things a little clearer in my older days. And of course, I've always been a student of math. I, my mind won't let me do it any more like I used to do it since I got sick. But, you know, math is the only exact science that there is, and numbers don't lie. And uh, I want to say first off that anybody that knows me or knows anything about me would naturally know that I support our president, Trump, 100%. I think he's doing a tremendous job. He was not my first choice in the election, but it's turned out to be the best choice. And uh, he's done a tremendous job against some big odds. I don't know how he manages to do it. We pray for him every day and every night, just like praying for our children and grandchildren. And uh, he, he's done a lot of good things to, to pull this nation out. And when, the, when America is pulled out and set up straight, the whole world is in better shape, not just our nation. We affect the whole the whole world. Uh, everybody's better off when America's in good shape. Um, one thing that I've thought about many times, and I I'm a, used to be when I was able a student of history, I loved history. But I've always firmly believed if you didn't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. And when I look back at what established this nation and what we've gone through in the last 60 years, particularly in the last 50 or so years, uh, what we've allowed to happen to our country is just basically from taking our eye off the ball and, and uh, not giving God the credit where credit was due. Uh, you know, this nation was founded on godly principles. Uh, it wasn't founded under the Koran. It wasn't founded under Buddhism. It was founded under Christianity. And, uh, and that's another subject that I believe in strongly is, uh, and you, because if you know me, you know, been through some mighty hard things. And I, like I told a preacher the other day, one of the hardest things for me is that I know that I know that I know I know what is real and what ain't, and I know the Lord. And I've done some things through when I lost my oldest son on into when I got so sick, and now that we've uh, had some severe financial setbacks due to that, I thought at one time I was in mighty, mighty good shape for a poor man. And uh, we've come through some mighty, mighty hard times, still going through hard times, and. I still do things and say things and lose faith sometimes, but I know better. Uh, you know, it's like I tell people all the time, uh, either God is or God ain't. If he is, you know, you know the right way and it don't matter. If he ain't, it sure don't matter. But it's one thing for sure. Go ahead and get your bags packed because you're leaving this world. It's just a blip on the screen in the whole scheme of Forever and four days, and forever and four days is a long time, folks. But anyhow, I'm going to get back to my original subject. Like I said, I'm bad about chasing the rabbit trail. My mind won't work like I want it to anymore. But, uh, you know, all throughout history, whether people understand it or not, um, the nation that's got the strongest military has always had the strongest currency. If you go back all back all the way back to the Roman Empire, one of the largest rulers of the largest mass of territory they'd ever been. And when they put their resources into their military, then their currency was in their part of the world was the standard. Just like America for a long time now. Our currency has been the standard that everybody works their dollar values around and it's not because they love us, it's not because we're pretty, it's not because of a lot of things, it's because whoever has the strongest military 
has the strongest currency because any time a currency is nothing but paper backed up and it says backed by the faith and uh, credit of the government that printed it, then you know, and I forget just what the wording is, my, my words won't come good anymore, but uh, that means this, it's no better than what's backing up that government that printed it. And therefore our military is what backs it up. Now, it's true that we spend a lot of money on military, but the thing about the military, it's not the money that matters. Just like out here in everyday life, it wouldn't matter if everybody got money in the mail every day free. But the thing that happens is if you don't work, God made us and God knew that idle hands was going to cause trouble. And at least people in the military, they buy their own cigarettes and when they come to go to bed at night, when they get a chance to rest, they're tired because they worked all day and they got some way to be. And a big purposefully strong military is like a good irrigation system. It does the best job when you never have to turn it on. And there's such a thing, and Ronald Reagan proved that, and now President Trump is proving it again. And if we're fortunate enough for him to serve another round, you'll see what I'm talking about. You're beginning to see it now. When you got a man in office that'll do what he says and says what he'll do, and you got a military that's unchallengeable, then everything is smooth, and that's when it makes the most money and for you and gives you the best, most confident life and backs up your currency. And um, a lot of people don't understand what made America the greatest, strongest power on earth now. Philosophically, I'd like to say it was the blessings of God, and I know it was. But God works in all kinds of ways. But the thing that everybody experienced that you can see that was the turning point that made America the powerhouse that it's been since then, and what made all the great minds around the world migrate to America. There was a time when a certain event took place even if they didn't understand why. Because people are like horses. They gravitate to where the power and the security is. Uh, wild horses, they're going to gravitate to where the one that's got the most power and the strength is, which sometimes may be the one in the herd that picks on them the most, may be the meanest one, but they go to where there's power and strength and security, because wherever there's power and strength, you, still, you can also find financial security. And what we did in World War II was we demonstrated then, by the grace of God, we were able to beat everybody to the punch. And it's, some people think it was a terrible thing, but in reality it saved many, many, many lives, as horrendous as it was. But when those bombs were dropped over there in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, in Japan, I think I got that right. From that moment, from that very moment on, there was desire to be a part of America from people all over the world that had the wherewithal and or the good sense to know where a better place was because from that point on began making America not only the uh, strongest military place on earth and known at that time, but also the most financially secure with the biggest economy. And it was what that, it all tied together. When you got smart people coming to a place, they do smart things. When you got entrepreneurs coming to a place, they make money. Nobody can make money without causing other people to make money. Uh, money is not a static thing. It, it either grows or it shrinks continually. And so the more people you got to know how to make money, if you turn them loose and let them make money, it causes other people to make money. Uh, and I know
know I'm wandering around a lot, but one of the major differences that I see in people asking politics, you know, I don't like to say whether I'm a Republican or a Democrat or independent or what I am. I always try to vote and lean towards the way that I see things happening in a way that I think God would bless it and it would be right with me and my Christian teachings. And, and up and until I could justify in my mind killing innocent children up and until and after the point of birth like these certain people are in this push for in this country today and that we've already allowed to happen in a rampant way. It, it, it's just a horrible thing. But until I could learn to justify that in my heart and at the same time get mad with somebody for eating a hamburger because a cow had to be killed, it was going to die anyway. Livestock only needs a short life. God put everything here at man's disposal. But he taught us life was precious. Until I could ever get to that point to reconcile that, I'll have to go with the party that thinks more like I do. And uh, cause we could discuss at long length how the Republican and the Democratic Party switched places and switched sides since the Civil War. That's another whole subject for another time. But she said I'm running out of time here. I'm going to follow up with this because I got... And I never even got to the part I intended to get to. But uh, there again, uh, I really believe in what I'm telling you. And you may not like it, you may not believe in it, but I believe if you'll research it and if you'll look at the numbers, uh, you know, just so for instance, if you don't believe what I'm saying, put this in there and chew on it for a while till I see you again. Until the American people understand that businesses and corporations, stores, everything like that, because you hear people all the time say, yeah, tax, tax the big business, tax the corporations, tax the rich, and that's fine. But until the average American can understand that businesses and, and corporations do not pay taxes, all they do is collect it from the end consumer and send it to the government. Whether you call it a tax, a fee, a whatever you call it, any time that the government or any bureaucracy takes a dollar away from a business by force, they have no place to get that dollar except through the products and services they provide to the public or to whoever they provide it for. Everything goes to the end consumer. We're all end consumers. So people that think that they don't pay taxes, the end consumer pays all the tax all the time. But I'm going to tell you the answer to all that one day when I get a chance to go into it and I'll show you how even what we've done today, and he's done an excellent job and I applaud him for it, is an easier way to do it, a more fair way and we still could get to a point where this nation couldn't throw money away that this nation could, could make and generate. You know, rising tide lifts all ships, and uh, but y'all bear with me. I know I'm stumbling and fumbling a lot, but some of it's going to make some sense to some of you, and uh, stick with me on this, and we're going to follow up with some more things as we go along. Uh, I enjoy talking about it, but I, I'm just not capable as I used to be, but y'all give us a like and a share and a subscribe if you will, and help me keep this thing going. I'm doing it mostly for just my grandchildren and children because I'm not supposed to live a whole lot longer and I want to be sure that they have something to remember me by hopefully and that it'll, like I tell, told my grandson the other night, he was getting ready to go to his first prom and I said, son, you just be good and the way you tell whether you're going to be good or not is you pretend mom and daddy or grandma and granddaddy is watching you all night long. And I said, you know me good enough to know that I know a young is going to be a young and a teenage boy is going to be a teenage boy. But you pretend that one of us is there with you, you won't mess up. Remember what you're made of. Good night, y'all. Come back to see us.